I've been using the Cirrus now uh, probably approximately three years. And uh, it's been really exciting to see all the advances that we've seen during this period of time. I looked at a, a good number of OCT devices. However, one of the things that's really important to me is the, the size of the normative database. And, and I, I really felt that the Zeiss system really was the superior system in that regard. And then the other thing is, uh, with the newer technologies, it really, in my mind, has some of the best resolution, uh, as well as uh, we're being able to look at so many different features, including the cornea, the anterior segment angle, which is really helpful in glaucoma, even the lens, as well as the retina. For me, the Cirrus is really, it's, it's a virtual histology of the retina. And as a glaucoma specialist, there's a number of things that we want to look at. We want to look at the optic nerve, and so we can do a topography, and so it'll actually estimate a vertical cup to disc ratio, as well as a horizontal cup to disc ratio. And then one of the really important things that we get from this device is we are able to measure the retinal nerve fiber layer around the, the optic nerve. And this is really important because as a glaucoma specialist, I feel like I'm a really good uh, clinician in the sense I can really examine the optic nerve and I've got a good sense as to pose uh, whether someone has glaucoma or not. However, uh, even though I can use a, a green light and look at the retinal nerve fiber layer, the OCT exponentially gives me more data, especially in those people that are kind of borderline cases. I'm able to detect early glaucoma at its very early stages with the OCT, but in addition, when I'm looking at more advanced disease, by looking at the macula and some of these ganglion cell tests, I actually think I can detect glaucoma progression easier than I would be able to with advanced visual field loss. Unfortunately, a lot of our patients nowadays have macular disease. So for faint ma uh, macular pucker or epiretinal membranes, uh, looking at macular disease is really important. And as a cataract surgeon also, I really like to look at the macula, especially if I'm considering a, a premium channel intraocular lens, to look at the retina to make sure that I'm going to meet the expectations of our patients. Uh, believe it or not, a little vitreous traction can make a difference. If you're a diabetic, it, you want to make sure that they don't have any macular edema. Sometimes these things can be very subtle. And uh, to me, uh, this is a really big help there. With this, this wide angle to angle function, we can actually l really look at the anterior segment better than ever before. And so we can really, I think, hopefully, as we measure the angle, become more facile and be able to predict which patients are going to develop angle closure glaucoma over time, and then hopefully also when we treat them with whether it's an iridotomy or a lens extraction, be able to see the changes in the angle anatomy to really quantitate and, and, and qualify uh, the treatment to make sure it's working. Another feature that I think would be important to mention is now we can actually look at the cornea as well. So we have these different uh, attachments. One's an anterior segment attachment to your, your cirrus, as well as a cornea uh, attachment. And what this allows us to do is look for corneal scarring within the, uh, the cornea. We can look at the thickness of the cornea or corneal pachymetry. And so when you're looking at these patients, you can actually, sometimes it's very difficult to see uh, uh, previous LASIK flaps. With this, you're going to be able to pick that up very easily. One of the other things that I think that really helped is helpful with, with Zeiss products, and we, we are really a kind of what I call a, a Zeiss clinical practice. So we use their visual field machines. We use Forum. We also use uh, their, their camera systems uh, as well as uh, some of their lasers. And what that allows us to do is integrate this into Forum and allows us to look at, for instance, combination reports. So we can have the visual fields and the OCTs compare it all on one, uh, really one scan. Uh, there's a, something now called the Pana, Panamap, and it will allow us to look at the macula, the, the ganglion cell and interplexiform layers, also the optic nerve, as well as the retinal nerve fiber layer, all in one scan. That's a big deal. Well, I think, you know, the one thing with any new technology, this machine has incredible capacity. And so I, th I think as a, a physician, you really have to take time to learn your machine. I think a lot of times we really underutilize the true benefits this can bring to our practice. One of the things that's bothered me in the past is sometimes the tracking system with the eyes. Well, now they automatically find the fovea. So it's, it's they call it the fovea finder. And so it actually allows us to get much more consistency and a more repetitive scan so that uh, the, when you're looking for potential artifact, which is another concern you have when you're looking at potential chains, it really minimizes that.
Well, I'm a big fan of the Cirrus. I really do think it's a, it's a state of the art, really uh, um, top top in class uh, um, type of product. Uh, I will tell you that there are other good products out there, so I don't want to uh, uh, disparage anyone else. But on the other hand, uh, I will tell you the amount of, of work that has gone into it, the normative database, I don't think can be underestimated. I think it's really important when you're looking to compare uh, age match controls that you really have the best data there. Uh, it's a tough machine to beat.